All right, let me know what you guys think of the booth. We had this thing redone and uh, they had the company come in. Crash Champions does a yearly service on all their booths and they had the company come in. They pulled the grates up, they cleaned out the pits. They really did a nice job. They pressure washed the grates and then they went ahead and put on their peelable white paint. So you guys can see here that the booth is a lot better for his visibility now because they painted it. But not only did they paint it, but they went ahead and they put in all new LED lights in here. So I'm curious to see how this video comes out being that we did the full booth makeover. You guys see we got the pig mat on the floor. We did a multiple color on it just because we wanted to do a little bit of something different than what's usually out there. So we're gonna shoot one today with you guys. I know there's a lot of talk out there about the candies in the OEM lines and people are struggling with them. Well, we're gonna go over that with you in this episode and shoot this here brand new 2024 Blazer. I'll show you the vehicle once we get out of the booth here. But this one here had a couple small blemishes on this rear door. So being it's close up towards the front, we're gonna go ahead and blend that door there. We did our normal prep like you guys know. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this one shot with you guys. That way we can try out the new Glazerit candies. This is not a true candy. Like I tell you guys all the time. To me, a true candy is in the clear coat. And if it's not in the clear coat, you're not gonna get that depth that those true House of Colors candies have like I have on my Cutlass. Because the thicker it is, the more depth you have and you'll look down in it and you'll see that awesome look that a true candy has. But the OEMs are trying to get that same look and making it easier out there for us guys in the field that are gonna have to duplicate these collision repair jobs. So that's nice of them to do that, but they're not gonna have that look that you guys know that I love being on the candy man. So let's go ahead, get this thing ready to shoot. We've already cleaned it. I'm gonna blow it and tack it. And then we'll go over the steps on how we're gonna handle this one here from Glazerit. All right, so we already went ahead and we shot this one and it gave us an 89. I did try to do it without the uh, code in and it ended up picking Mazda 46V. So that's telling us that we are in the ballpark for the candies. And this one here was an 89, like I said, for General Motors. So I was talking with Pat and he told me, if you have anything that is in the 90 range, do not go with the adjusted because sometimes that camera will over adjust it and it'll get it way out of the ballpark. And I did have that come up last week when I was doing one. So I was shooting code 300 for a BMW and I went with the adjusted, even though I had a 90 something on my regular uh, shot. And I started spraying that thing and checking the color and that color was very, very blue. I called Pat, I said, what's going on? He says, do not go with the adjusted. Sometimes it will go to the extreme and it will turn that color the wrong way. So if you have a 90, he recommends going with the original shot that you have in the camera. And that's what I did. And then that color blended out beautifully on that white BMW with the code 300. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our 89 because you guys know in Glazerit, we don't have chips. We shoot it with the camera and then we go ahead and do a spray out as we're doing the job, especially with something like this to verify how many coats of candy you're gonna need to get your color. So this is Cherry Bomb Tint Coat. Let's go ahead and get this thing mixed up and then we'll start putting our sealer down in our base. So we're gonna start out and on this color, it is crucial to put down the right sealer. So this one is gonna be the L002 in the solvent sealer that we use here. And we've got our spray out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and get my cart sealed up. Then we'll apply our ground coat. Then I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the spray out card. That way I know how many coats 
of the candy we're gonna need to match this. So if you were doing this at home, you're not gonna have to worry about it as much if you're doing an overall paint job, but you do wanna make sure you have enough candy on it, that way you get the right effect. But for us guys in the collision world, we're trying to match the vehicle color, so we have to do the spray out card to identify how many coats. I think this one isn't gonna need that many coats because it's not really that vivid. It seems to be very see-through with the candy. So let's go ahead, get our card sealed up, and then we'll hit it with our ground coat, and we'll start moving through this shop. All right, so you see we've got our sealer applied and when I was doing this, I was blowing everything towards the area that I'm gonna be painting up to the other door. You wanna try to make sure that you leave as much of this as the original blend area because you're gonna start to bring your sealer, your color, your mid coat and you can have a chance of getting to the edge of your panel and then you're gonna have a problem. So even here, we're gonna be fixing up here towards this so we're going to be crucial to try to stay off the back end of that panel but if you notice we put sealer on the edge of the door that didn't have a repair you want to make sure that everything that you do is the same that way when these panels go on these cars because you guys know here we paint them off the car if you don't do the identical exact same thing to each part when it goes back on the car you're going to have mismatched paint so don't think, okay, that's already red. I'll just go right into my ground coat because the surface substrate, even though it is red, if it's a sanded part or if it's a non-sanded part, that can change the way the metallics are gonna look. So make sure that you do the exact same thing when the panels butt up. That way you know you're not gonna have any problems. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna tack off the end of both of my blend panels. We'll start to put down our ground coat and then we'll start our spray out card to identify how much candy we're gonna need to put on this one. Alright, so we've got our ground coat on and you guys seen that we turned the lights off. That's one of the things that I always do, especially on something like this because I want to see how far that metallic has traveled over that blend panel because I have to make sure that I'm going to have my candy go a little bit past that metallic. Otherwise, you're going to see sparkle 
of a different color further than your candy is. So that is a big tip when you're doing these candy jobs. Make sure you get your candy past your metallic ground coat or you're gonna see that sparkle and it's gonna be the wrong color. So we've got it blended out good. We use the 3M Performance Gun with the finer heads. These are the new finer heads and I really like this gun for something like this when I'm trying to keep it small because a lot of times the guns will put out a lot of overspray where this here performance gun with the finer head really performs well on keeping low overspray. So we're gonna go ahead now, we'll spray our card, we'll get it checked out, make sure it's gonna match. That way we can put the amount of coats we need on the actual parts and then clear it and check our color. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and check our color. We cleared the card, you guys seen that? And I did half the card with the candy and half of it without. That way you guys could see why they call this a candy. It's because the mid coat is what gives it that vivid look over the ground coat by the amount of coats you put. And you guys see we put about one and a half coats on there, the recommended amount from uh, Glazerit to test it. Because like I said, this one to me doesn't look that vivid, but we'll go ahead and check it now. So we'll go ahead, we'll put one and a half coats. Now that we know what we need, with it clear coated, make sure you clear it. We'll be able to get that one dialed in there real quick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let that bake before I show it to you, but I wanted to break out the old House of Colors book. This is the original House of Colors candy uh, booklet that shows all the candies. I've had this thing for many, many years. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying the true candy. So you guys see here, we got purple, Spanish gold, teal, magenta. This is the same candy color coat on top of a different ground coat. So you can achieve all these colors from using different ground coats with your uh, candy on top of it. So what we've decided here is that, obviously to me, this is my favorite, but the OEMs are trying to duplicate some of these nice vivid colors. Obviously they don't have anything crazy like that yet, but who knows, they may start coming out with some of the more vibrant colors and check out some of these old flakes that they, that they used to have on some of the old hot rods back in the day. This one here I actually had on a nice 82 box Chevy. So just wanted to show you guys the original candies and uh, that's the one that we did today and there was the regular OEM.
All right, so I can't complain about that, especially after a bake. This stuff holds its gloss phenomenal. And with this one here, we use the Luma 3 Exodus again. You guys know I've been using that gun lately and I haven't even put it down as far as the clear coat goes because it lays down such a nice clear coat. You guys see here, it's flat. It still has the peel like the factory needs, but it looks phenomenal and it lays it down nicely. So some of the takeaways from this video, you guys see here we have our stands and they're at the same height. Make sure you put your stands at the same height if you wanna have a little bit of help because when you're bending over to spray this, you wanna bend over and use the stands to help you out by having them at the same height because now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna be at the same height. That way I can try to be as consistent as I am because if you had one door higher than the other, you are gonna spray that differently just from it being higher up. So try to get your panels lined up. I see some guys, they'll take some of these panels and they'll roll them over and put them next to each other so that they can walk the whole side of the car. And sometimes that's a good way of doing it too if you're not too uh, comfortable with them being separated. I like to have them separated. That way I can just act like this is a square like I've showed you guys in some of the other videos. Take it off the panel Make like you're spraying it in a square, the same thing we did with this one. And that way when everything goes back up, you guys can see here that this is gonna match up perfectly because we did the same exact thing on everything with the sealer to the ground coat, to the candy, and even the clear coat. So the, what is the difference now between the true candies? The OEM candies are most of the time sprayed over the same color. So if they're using a red, they're gonna have a red ground coat. Sometimes they're a little bit more copper, but that makes it easier. But that also takes away from that vivid look that I showed you guys in that book over there. They usually use silver and golds, and that's what gives it such of that pop, but it makes it very hard, especially if a robot spraying parts inside there, it's gonna be very hard for it to get an even consistent pattern. And then they think about if that car was ever having to be repaired, it could be a nightmare out there. So looks good, almost as good as a real candy, but no way near am I gonna ever go with a base coat candy over a true UK urethane candy because it looks phenomenal. So I hope you guys got something out of this video and we'll see you guys in the next one.